Welcome back folks, thanks for joining me for another lesson. Uh, today we'll be focusing on the nose. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel um, and like and comment the videos if you find them helpful. Um, share with me your thoughts, anything that you'd like me to add uh, to the body of work I'm creating here. Today's lesson will be focusing on how to draw the nose and understanding its shape form. So, without any further ado, let me begin. So I've prepared a uh, lesson, pre-drawn it. I'll sit back and play it and pause it as we go along here. Let's get into this freaking lesson here, boys and gals. So, uh, in front of you here, you can obviously see uh, the three diagrams I have. Uh, front profile and a three-quarter view of the nose. Now keep in mind, this is just one shape. Uh, a nose can um, can vary, so the nose takes on many different shapes, uh, both lengthwise, widthwise, um, as far as protrusion, uh, as far as uh, you know, s straightness coming off of the bridge. You know, so what this example indicates is an understanding of the overlap of muscles and skin that are uh, taking place uh, in, the, in the nasal area. So long and short, you've got these dots here indicating where the nasal bone ends uh, and the cavity of the nasal uh, area begins and essentially from this black line right here and these arched dotted lines right here is where your um, your nose is going to start to protrude off of your face and, and into its its form. So if you're looking at me right now, you're going to see that area right here. And at that point, all the cartilage and um, and skin starts to fold over and down into my actual my nose again what I'm drawing right here is uh, that area I was uh, referring to in front which is the septal nasal cartilage right now I'm drawing more or less um, a portion of that here split it into two um, that area I just drew underneath there is called the um, medial crust of the major alar cartilage. Okay, you need to put a name to it, and uh, and it has like two lobes to it. That's why I've drawn a line split down the center of my nose there. I'm gonna emphasize that again. Uh, so those lobes there, hanging over top of the medial crust is the uh, lateral crust okay of the major alar alar cartilage all right so you're you're just talking about this piece of cartilage in your nose and this piece of cartilage in your nose you know just like your brain just like the rest of your face there's two sides to it right and then above it Above it would be what I mentioned uh, before. I don't know if I mentioned it before. Would that basically be your lateral uh, processes of the septal uh, nasal cartilage? So think laterally, you know, um, out to the sides. So one, two, and then one, two, you know. And then the um, the nostrils there. Their anatomical name is. Uh, Fibro fatty tissue, alar, alar fibro fatty tissue, okay, and um, I'm actually going to illustrate a better uh, example, I think, on the three-quarter drawing that's coming up here. Uh, in this case, moving on to the three-quarter view of the nose, I'm again emphasizing that angle. Uh, of the top of the bridge of the nose that leads into your forehead, just how kind of it works, that it comes down into the um, 
the, the top lip there of your nasal bone, right? Kind of forming, well, it forms a canopy, essentially. If you're looking at it uh, at, your, as your, at your nasal bone from a profile view, you know, it kind of, it kind of hooks over top a little bit, right? And I'm indicating it right there. So that area of cartilage that's jutting out, uh, like I divided it above, again, here's an easier way to think about it. If you build the, um, the lateral crust of the major alar cartilage, which is right in here, okay? And then the um, lateral process of the sepital nasal cartilage, which is right above. You build those two as one. Build those two as one right into the nasal bone, okay? And think of them as one big group, okay? And then just understand that underneath there's another piece of cartilage, right? That leads into the actual, uh, your, your, your actual nostrils. It actually... It's an area that leads into your nostrils, and like I mentioned before, it's called the crust or the medial crust of the major alar cartilage, okay? I think I give a demonstration of what that looks like here. That uh, again, your nostrils or your fibro fatty tissue is, um, is just coming over and protecting that area um, where the edge of your uh, nasal cavity continues, hence your actual um, nasal pathways are leading from those holes right into the nasal cavity. So think of that as well when you're drawing a nose, that you can't flare your nostrils out too far, they have to somehow filter inside of that bone, right? into that gap inside of the bone. Anyways, and then I do another uh, little profile view here. Again, kind of just showing you that angle from the bridge of the nose, you know, to that, uh, to that canopy. And that's kind of what I was emphasizing as I was just talking there, is that right here, you know, it's an angle, right? It's not perfectly straight up and down. It kind of comes back into the face. And again, even if you look at the nostrils here, you know, they kind of uh, protect that passageway where the nasal passages begin, right? Right into that nasal cavity. Uh, let's look at the diagram as I draw along here. I probably indicate something more or less. I did these a couple days ago, so I'm a little lost as to exactly what I was trying to show. Just kind of breaking down shapes in the nose, you know, ways to think about it. So I, I'm, I wanted to focus on that little lip area. This would be right underneath your nose. Um, those angles can take on many different shapes. Okay, how how your lip forms into that uh, that um, sepital cartilage. Okay. But as you can see right here, what I'm doing is I'm I'm showing that that nasal um, spine bone that uh, we went over in a prior video. It's right there. So that angle is essentially what you're trying to capture as it as it you know overlaps um, your maxilla, right? So your your top lip, all that all that cartilage, all that uh, muscle and, uh, and and skin above your lip. And then, obviously, the cartilage in your nose forming the canopy over that, made up of those three parts that I have been talking about this whole video. I don't know how clear that is to you. I, I hope that makes sense. I just, I, I really think this is how you got to break it down for yourself. I, I used to do this back in college, and, and doing it again like this now to uh, explain it to you guys, I'm hoping, is, um, is setting it... Uh, is setting a good example here of how to think about this stuff. Probably not even include what I just said. Went back to my example here just to kind of reiterate that uh, contour line. So there you have it. Kind of follows that nasal spine. 
goes right into the cartilage of the nose, you know, forming whatever contour the nose may have, depending on the, the person you're drawing. It's always going to change. Here are a couple examples of just uh, how you can tilt um, features in the face around to fit the nose. And like still always using the principles I've told you, uh, lining your eyes up with the uh, with the edges of your nostrils. Okay, and you've got those uh, contouring lines riding from your supraorbital foramen right into your eye socket, right down into your zygotic uh, process, zygomatic process. Excuse me. And if we just tilt it a little bit more, you know, the angles don't really change much, you know. You can you can keep those principles there to really line up everything in the face. But um, it's it's that you draw all the other articulated lines. See? Like that. All the other articulated lines are kind of there to support uh, the relationship between the features in the face. So those are kind of things you always, you always, excuse me, those are things you always want to be conscious of. And if you look at other examples of just eyebrows eyes in their sockets and then you know um, the forehead meeting the bridge of the nose um, it varies it alters but the same rules there you know I and mean, even in this example of the face you can you can see where um, where the the nasal bone would actually be sitting in place here here I'm drawing it for you essentially like that gives you an understanding of how that nose is actually sitting over top. This first example is pretty aggressive. That brow area versus the the bridge of the nose and the protrusion of the nose. Second example, a little more laid back, you know. The uh, the nose falls pretty f flat straight down to the tip there off of the uh, off the bridge of the nose. And then you have my female example and you know her angles in her face are are almost you know, perfect, right? There's no suggestion that there's bone laying underneath it at all. It's just angles to create a, a soft looking face. And that's kind of what you want to go for if you're trying to draw a pretty woman. And there's another example. Just softer features. All the same ideas. All the same things lining up in the face. You know? And there's a frontal one without an outline. You know, and you, you get the idea of uh, of just how the nose can sit in there so subtly. You know, especially from the front when you're drawing a female, you don't have to really articulate um, any any of that sapital cartilage uh, at all. That lateral cartilage I was talking about, and it forms different angles on everybody, right? But on females, yeah, you can just you can just worry about what's going on right here and where the nostrils are. Just little indications. When you look at comic art, there's not a lot of uh, attention drawn to the center of a female's face. Here is my first example. I just wanted to take our nose now and tilt it around for you. Draw some features around it. Give you an idea of how it sits in the face. You can see I'm not going too crazy, but I am separating the nose out in little pieces and chunks. Basically, those areas that I've described to you today. So obviously at an angle like this, you're going to have, um, you know, trickier time. You're going to have a trickier time uh, mastering those angles, but with practice, you're going to understand how they work as you tilt the face up and down. It's just, I'm mean, just, again, giving you examples of, uh, of things to look out for. See, this whole video I've been paying attention to this little area right in here right guys and there's an example of how you can twist and tilt that to indicate the angle of the face and um, you know later on when you get really advanced you can use little areas like this to highlight where um, you know bounce light and stuff might be cutting into your image and, uh, and that's where you really start to impress your audience, okay? And I'm doing the same kind of thing in here. Basically what you're doing, you're just creating like polygons in your face that you're eventually gonna either drop shadow into or highlight or hatch over or leaf flat, you know? Like, look up polygons 
and you'll know what I'm talking about. Today. Okay, this one is a look down. All right, and skip ahead here. Drawn in. We're looking down on it a little more. And here's just um, a contour line of of how the nose juts out of the face and how to think about it in relationship to the angle of the forehead meeting it as well as the um, entire jaw and mouth area meeting it from underneath okay really use that nose as a shape in the face to protrude and you know di direct where the where the face is pointed you know uh, your nose is a great marker for the face um, if you want to build everything around it, it can be done quite simply. As you see in these examples, a lot of times I actually start with the nose and almost build the faces around it. I mean, you really can't go wrong. Just as long as you understand what you're drawing when it comes to the, what the nose actually is. You know? Right from day one, what have I stressed? Learn that skull, therefore you'll learn why certain areas and playing fields exist in the face. Once you understand all that, then you bend the rules. So there you have it, another example of looking down. The nose protrudes over top of the mouth, you know. And, you know, the takeaway from these videos should be that you you study your own nose, you break it down the way I've broke my face down, you know, into little chunks and the little parts. Mind these areas that are super pertinent to showing the form of the skull beneath your nose, okay? I didn't really show it in this example here, but that, uh, that edge of the nasal bone, obviously, guys. If you're seeing it in your head, it should be right about there, right? Just where my other ones were. You know? It's another playing field right there. That little area jutting out beneath the, uh, the, the brow here, hanging over top of the bridge of the nose. So, you know, possibilities are endless. These are just the ways that I like to draw the nose. Uh, I, I really don't know how to break it down any more simple. Um, look at anatomy books, look at your own schnoz, look at other people's schnozzes, and then, of course, look at Disney movies. Look at comic books, and look at how they draw their noses, okay? Go for more stylized stuff, too, because they tend to, uh, people who are comfortable drawing stylized noses, stylized features and faces that keep it relatively am anatomic, like a baseline ana anatomic uh, functionality there, You'll notice that they use that nose, you know, very uh, like pivotally, in a pivot, pivotal way. They build everything off of it. Okay, look. Um, look at these examples right here. Look at these. This is Matteo Scalera, one of my favorites. Look at those examples. I just flipped open to a random page. You know, he really puts it in uh, to the uh, the close shots on the characters. The nose. It's like the center point of the face, you know, he can build everything off it from the angle he's chosen. Anyway, anyhow, thanks for crashing, alright? Hit the subscribe button. I hope you learned something today. Thanks for your time. See you on the next one.